Hi, I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing, and I'm inviting you in just a, a minute and a half early here uh, to make sure that you can hear me and you can see me. So, hi, I'm happy that you're here today. If you could just take a second before we really get started in earnest and let me know that you can hear me and see me okay, then we'll be all set and ready to go here. So just put it in the chat bar, hi, I can hear you, I can see you, let me know that that's okay. And so that way in the next minute when I go live, I know that <laughs> I'm already live, but when people come on, so hi Mason from Nigeria, awesome. Can you hear me and see me okay? I just want to make sure that it's good. So it's great to have you from Nigeria, Mason. I don't know what day and time it is for you over there. It's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon here in the United States in the state of Utah on uh, Tuesday. So, um, thanks. Let's see here. I've never been this early. Hi, Mendez. <laughs> uh, Hi from Germany. Uh, Mason, your question is how do you apply for singing lessons? I'll, I can talk about that maybe at the, uh, at the end of our, our session here. So I'm going to start talking here. It's uh, welcoming everyone. This is Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing and welcome to Power to Sing Live. I think it's number 34 and our title of our discussion today is um, Belting in Chest. And <laughs> I got, I got this really interesting piece of, uh, well, I, I got an email this week from um, one of my subscribers, and a very uh, earnest uh, question, and so I want to kind of review some of this. Uh, hi, Alta, uh, Demi, hello. Um, I pass, hi, pass, hi, pass. From Germany, hi, pass, kaipa. So I, I'm not getting very close to that. I think my pronunciation is pretty bad, but anyway. So great to have everybody here today. Um, and we actually have a guest uh, here today from Nepal, which is amazing. And um, so thank you very much for being here. Nabi, Nabin Tangting, Nabin Tangting. Uh, Demi says, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Hmm. Anybody else having the problem not being able to see me? Uh, please let me know. I can, I'm looking at my uh, test screen here on YouTube. Ah, I don't see it there either. Let me just see here. Uh, public view. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, gotcha. You can hear me. Okay, well, how about this? Would that work? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, thank you for letting me know. I really appreciate it. Uh, Demi and Altug. Thanks, you guys. Okay, well, this is better, huh? Now we feel like we're talking to each other, right? It's not some voice from the dark. <laughs> okay, so here's the, here's the note. While I uh, belted out a lot of high notes, you, he said, a while ago, I belted out a lot of high notes using my head voice this morning. The highest was G6. That's like way in the heck up there. And a lot of F sharp 5, G5. But when I tried to belt my using my chest voice, I can't reach it. That's my problem. Uh, sometimes my voice can belt really high notes. Sometimes it only has an octave, especially in the morning. So I want to talk about belting chest voice. And all of us probably know what that is. That's when you're singing and you start to hit that area of the bridge where it starts to feel difficult. Instead of bridging, we start belting. And uh, it's where we're really pulling up the bottom in, in, in terms of this definition here. I'm not talking about uh, there's so many different variations of uh, definitions of belt, but so 
the way I'm reading this is this was more of a kind of a yell voice. So if I said, ma, ma, that's more of a belt sound. And uh, the problem is my larynx is up and I'm, I'm really not allowing any head voice to come in. So I can do that. I mean, I can do it and it probably sounds pretty decent. But you know what, if I do that night after night in multiple songs, na, I'm not going to try, I'm not, I don't want to do it because what happens is it breaks and then you, you basically blow your vocal cords, uh, you lose the coordination, you lose the balance in your voice. And um, so let's talk about the different registers for a second. Chest voice is E, uh, for, for the men, it's a, everything from E flat down, E flat above middle C. So everything down below that. Um, for the ladies, the chest voice is everything essentially below the A flat above middle C. So, and I've taught plenty of girls who can sing down into here. I've even had some come down into here. That's uh, the real contraltos. And so um, that's the range of our chest voice. That's a chest register. And there's no reason. There's absolutely no reason in the world why you would ever pull that chest voice higher than that. In fact, I recommend that you start bridging even a little bit sooner than that. Um, that is allowing some head voice to start coming in before you hit the bridge. Because you, can't you feel it on the way? I feel it. I f in fact, I felt it for years. As I mentioned, the, the E is where most men bridge. For years, I felt it at the B below middle C. Welcome to find out that I've got so much heft in the bottom of my voice. Uh, and I can, I can sing down here. That's the D. Um, that's the, the low G, the G2. So, I, I mean, I sing those notes regularly and I've got quite a bit of bottom in it. So I actually bridge lower uh, where the basso uh, the basso cantata would bridge, which is about the A, B, B flat, B, and C, middle C. And so um, it's just, there's no need for us to pull our chest voice up, whether it's guys or girls. And uh, the only need, the only reason why people do it or have to do it is because they can't, they haven't learned how to get into that middle area without cracking or breaking or without losing a lot of the power and strength of the middle area. And, uh, and so they pull it up. And then they pull it up where head voice is supposed to come in. So if I, I think I've already demonstrated that pulling it up to the G, which is my beginning of the men's head voice. So if I learn how to bridge, in other words, if I take, if I got my chest voice and I got my head voice and I learned how to, to put this middle together, I can connect these two so that I don't have to pull up the bottom. So if I said, <laughs> Now, <clears throat> in the middle, <laughs> that's the uh, E to the G, that's my middle, that's that bridge area. And, um, I'm not, I'm not pulling my chest voice there. That's a blend, that's a head and chest mix voice. And so why would I pull up my chest voice? The only reason why I would do it is because I don't, I wouldn't, you know, if I don't know how to, to bridge into that middle. And the same thing is with the girls. Now I can, I can't demonstrate it as well as down below, but that's not my, that's not pulled up chest. If, if I were a lady singing that, that would be a, a, a mixed voice, a mix of chest and the head voice coming in. So why are you pulling chest? Why pull chest? I don't understand. It's, why damage your vo why risk your vocal cords? If you go to the my no the knowledge center on my website, I'm kind of ranting today, aren't I? I need to be I need to settle down a little bit.
<laughs> Take a deep breath. If you go to the Knowledge Center on my website and watch the videos about pulled chest, I have examples of the professionals, a lot of the professionals who pull their chest voice. Don't get me wrong, that's not because they're, they're, uh, they should be. I'm showing examples of what shouldn't be, even in the professional ranks. And as evidence of that it should not be, at least three, maybe four of those examples have already had surgery on their vocal cords to remove polyps or to take care of a vocal hemorrhage. Now hemorrhage is a ruptured blood vessel right on the vocal cord. And uh, so you actually have blood coming out of the vocal cord because the blood vessel is ruptured. Why? Because you're, they're pulling their chest voice time after time after time after time night after night. You, they don't need to do that. And you don't either. There's so much wonderful voice available for, for us when we learn to bridge. Okay. Well, um, so chest voice, middle, head voice. That middle is where all the action is because once we learn how to, to build that middle in, Nobody even knows that you're not in chest. They think you're in chest. Or they might think you're belting or, or something because you're, you're not losing any power there. <laughs> Sorry. That's E flat, and I'm not I'm not uh, belting, I'm not in falsetto, and uh, and so that's that's my head voice certainly by E flat, and yet there's lots of power in that. Now I confess that I didn't used to be able to do that even uh, a few years into this. Uh, I'm kind of slow but uh, it's available to us. It's available to be done in the right way, in a healthy way, in a good way, so that we can have this tremendously big, wonderful, powerful sound throughout the range, full range of our voice, chest to head and in the middle, and not lose anything without having to pull. So, anyway. So I'm gonna uh, address some questions here, and then we're gonna try, I'm gonna try and be done uh, at the half hour. So I hope I haven't offended anybody here. I don't know why I've been feeling so passionate about this. <laughs> but it's my message, really. It's you can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. You don't have to pull your chest voice up. Okay. Again, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so the question was asked by Mason from Nigeria, how do you apply for Skype lessons? So uh, let me just quickly, um, go to my home screen and um, I'll just show you very quickly. If you go to the Knowledge Center, or sorry, if you go to the work with me section on, um, In the menu, it says schedule a Skype lesson. So powertosing.com, then you uh, go to the work with me section, then there's a schedule a Skype lesson. Okay? So I hope that answers that question. Um, okay, so some of the other questions here. Hi from Germany. Gosh, it's so great to have everybody here today. Um, Altug, I think uh, Altug is from. Malta, where are you from? Greece? Turkey? I can't. I probably shouldn't say those two countries together. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> remind me where you were from. Hi, Demi. Um, okay, I, well, I'm in Nepal. I need a middle voice exercise. A middle voice exercise. Well, 
I think probably, again, the fastest way to do this is um, have you gotten your, if you've gotten your vocal type, be sure and get your vocal type from the website. And um, again, let me go back to the website because this is really the fastest, easiest, quickest way to do this. I'm going to bring you back up to the home screen. You, get, you go take the power test, which is um, here. There's a video that explains what the power test is. You start the recording, you record it, then singing, ah. Then you take the quiz and submit it. And it will, you'll get an email back that has your vocal type on it. Or you can send it to me and I'll send you your vocal type. Then you go to the Knowledge Center once you know your vocal type. And, um, and then you watch the videos. Your vocal type might be pole chest high larynx. So you go to the pole chest high larynx or any of these others. And then you download. Here, here it explains what it is. And then I show you exercises that will build your middle. That's what all of these exercises for men and women will do. Whether it's pole chest high larynx, whether it's flip falsetto, whether it's light chest, no chest. All of these, uh, all of those examples will help you build your middle. Okay, so uh, and then they're download. You can download them for free, and that's going to be the fastest, quickest way. Uh, let me get back to the questions. And 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 a lot of you who are here have already done this. I think that you would agree that this is a. These are great exercises to build your middle, and there's a. There's several of them there that will help you. Um, again, thanks, Demi, for letting me know. Alta, thanks for letting me know that you I didn't have, you couldn't see me. That's that was my mistake. Um, hi from Tanzania, uh, Riskid de Brown. Great, awesome, so wonderful to have you here. Alicia, hi. Alicia G. Giacomini. Did I say that right? Alicia, so great to have you here. Um, okay, now let me see here. See if there's any others. Uh, can't uh, can't see. Can't see. Can see. Okay. <laughs> these are old questions. Sorry. When I'm scanning these by myself, um, sometimes I'm repeating the same question. How not to be breathy in the passaggio? Let's talk about this for a minute. Breathiness is usually because our vocal cords, in many cases, the cords aren't coming together. So, if I have a singer, uh, fe male or female, whose chords are not adducting, they're not, they're not coming together firmly. You know, they're, 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 if, if these were your vocal cords, they're just barely coming together, you know. Uh, if I were holding a piece of paper, maybe I couldn't, you know, maybe it wouldn't be. So, there's, they've got to close, so there's a little bit of resistance, you know. So, um, so the first thing you should do, uh, the first thing I do with a singer with a light, uh, with a light chest or chest voice would be ah 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 ah. Now, if it's ah ah, it's not sufficient. Ah, got to get in there and get those chords together. And then I would say nay 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 na 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 nay 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 nay. So if we're gonna do that in the middle, so I would start it in chest first of all. You got to get the chest going and make sure it's going, and then go up, go up to your middle. Nay 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 nay. Or I do this on na 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 na. Maybe be a little bratty. Na 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 na. More likely. Na 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 na. You have to do a little more firmly. Na 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 na. 
na 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 na. Another good one would be na 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 na. Nay, 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 Now, a little less aggressive, but just as effective, would be something like this. So, um, these are those are things that are going to help build the middle and build the head voice. Um, but what? But what a lot of people do is uh, because those are, it takes a while to build that, is they just pull chest. They don't want to do that. You don't want to pull chest because then you can't ever build. See, if you pull chest, now you can't, uh, you don't have a mix. And so you can't build your mix or the middle or your bridge. You can't build it because you don't have anything to mix. You don't have any uh, head voice coming in if you're just pulling your chest. So you've got to be patient with it. But in some cases, I've had some students who were so concerned that they were going to overcompress that they were too light. So the compression is a friendly compression. Mum, no, 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 no. Now I'm not saying. That's probably not going to be sufficient for a, a, a singer who has a light chest, no chest, or is trying to build the middle. You've got to be a little more aggressive. But I'm not saying, no, 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 I'm not pulling up chest. No, 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 no. I'm leaning in on it, but I'm not grabbing the vocal cord. I'm leaning in on the, on the, on the feeling of the, of the head and the chest uh, resonances. That's very esoteric. It's pretty hard to explain, but um, that's what I would do. So alto, how not to be breathy in the passaggio. Establish chest, and then um, and all those exercises will be helpful. How can you get riffs? Uh, Ty Wilson asks, how can you get riffs? Ty, I don't personally do riffs because I do musical theater, and I just don't have that many never done a show where I've had to do a riff, okay? But I've had a lot of students who learn to do riffs by copying their favorite singer who riffs. And you just work on that, you work on it, and you, you, you sing along with them, and you memorize what they're doing. Um, so that's my first answer to that. If I were wanting to learn the, learn the riff, I'd say, uh, uh, start out with something really basic like, and do a couple of oohs, or when you're singing along. Um, or here's another very common, oh, 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 oh. So you add a little, a uh, couple of those little licks at, uh, on the ends of uh, a word or something like that, and pretty soon you start building on those. Or listen to what I did, helped one of my students with, we, we taped, we uh, made a MP3 recording of um, Tori Kelly, I think, and uh, played it over and over again, just that little section. Then we'd slow it down in slow motion and listen to what she was doing. And um, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really very helpful. Now, uh, let me give you a little tip here, you guys. Um, there's a, there's a, I think it's called like a plug-in for Chrome. And the plug-in for Chrome is called, um, you might want to search this. It's called Pitch Shifter. Pitch Shifter. But you can also slow down or speed up the rate of playback, okay? 
So it's a plug-in, goes right into Chrome, you turn it on, and then whatever you play, like you play a, a YouTube video, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, and you can change the key, which is what I use it for. So Ty, you might want to look at getting Pitch Shifter for a Chrome, for the Chrome uh, browser, and uh, it's free, you just, just a little plug-in, and then you can turn that on, and, uh, and then you can play, slow down the playback rate. I was looking to see what it says there. It's playback rate. You can slow it down. Listen to those riffs in slow motion. Start singing along with those. Really break them down and, and uh, start practicing doing them. And that's, that's a great way to do it. Uh, hi, Christina. Haven't seen you for a while. So great to have you here. Um, Turkey. Okay. Thanks, I'll talk. I was appreciate knowing that. Um, so this is a question that comes up quite a bit. Uh, that how do you know if you're doing the exercises right? You take a lesson. I can tell you in. Uh, immediately, whether you're doing it right or wrong. Um, another way to do it is have somebody listen to my demonstration, like on the video, and have a friend or a family member listen to what you're doing and listen to what I'm doing and let them tell you if it's the same. Um, I'd say the number one f mistake that people uh, make in doing the exercises, they do them too loud. Um, the other, I guess the other side of the coin is you don't want to do them so soft that you're in light chest all the time. It has to be kind of a medium soft or a medium. And uh, those are two very common, well, especially the too loud. Too soft is very rare, but too loud is like every day I see that happening. Um, so Demi says, I'm looking to take your test for this type of... Uh, Website or my tonsils are huge. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry to hear that, <laughs> uh, Demi. Um, so, not an effect at the moment, affecting my resonance. Could this make result inaccurate in any way? You know, I don't think so. I don't think you're going to be inaccurate. So, um, I'm getting a message here from my assistant, who's also my wife. You want to come on TV? Oh, okay. So she's helping me with some of my questions. And um, so, Demi, I don't think you're going to be affected by us, uh, by the tonsils. And I don't think they're going to be, even if they're a little bit swollen, I don't think you're going to be affect, in, affected by it. I've had a lot of, I've had several students who have sung with tonsil, tonsillitis, and so forth. And they, um, they go get, and they're able to do this. They're able to do it. They're able to get into their, their, their um, into the middle and up into their head voice. They're able to bridge. And, um, and I don't think it affected, it wouldn't affect their, um, their vocal tests. I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be all right. Uh, Altug asks, uh, should mom exercise Chest, should they be chestier than other exercises like goo? Goo and mum yeah, are very different, aren't they? And so the goo is, depends on where you're doing them, right? Goo, 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 mum, 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 mum. But here's the, and this is a very good point. Ooh, ooh is a heady vowel, and it encourages head, and it encourages a lighter production. Ah, uh, is chestier. So yes, Altug, it's very perceptive of you. It's a very good point that you're going to um, you're going to notice a difference because you are on the a uh vowel. It's a chestier vowel, and so that drives more of the chest. 
And vowels are characteristic that way. Vowels tend to do certain things, just like humans tend to sing. It tends, they tend to do certain things. So, uh, a, e, a, those are all rather chesty. U, e, are very heady, the two most headier vowels. Um, hi from Italy. Uh, let me just, uh, let me see. Frederick Intel's channel, hi. So the real question is how to apply this mixed voice to every type of songs. Great question. So if I said, so first of all, you know, you really need to be able to do it in the exercises. So once you get it solidified, you learn how to, to get into the bridge and uh, move from chest to head and can do that successfully in the exercises on multiple vowels also. As Altec is suggesting here, uh, not only do you want to be able to do it with a goo, 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 goo. you want to do it with a mum, 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 no, 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 nay, 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 nay. So then how do we apply it in the song? The, probably the fastest, first of all, establish, get, it, get your technique and the exercises uh, down so that you can do them without reach, without pull, um, and get, you find that balance in the exercises. And then you take that same thing into the song. So let's just say I'm, if I sing, um, what would be a good song here? Uh, just. Uh, Yesterday, all my trouble seemed so far away. So if I said, Mama, Mom, Mama, 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 do it in Mum, and do the or do it in No, 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 No. I'm probably missing some of the melody, but you get the idea that substitute the, instead of doing the words, do the exercise, do, use the word of the exercise that worked, that you're able to do in your exercises. Put those words in where the bridge is, and then go back to the, uh, do the exercise word, and then go back to the, the word of the song, and uh, move them in and out like that. So do it with the exercise word until it solidifies and you, you feel it, and you know you're in it and then go back to the words. Uh, Alicia Singh, hi. I'm 26 years old. What exercise should I do to get a good voice in one year as I'm preparing myself for a reality show? Uh, great question, Alicia. Go back and watch the video that uh, earlier on this video, if you join me late, where I show you do, uh, you take the vocal, the vocal test, the power test, find out your vocal type, and then download the exercises for your vocal type. That's going to help you build your middle, build that mix area, build the bridge, and that's going to help you more than anything else to prepare for any kind of a singing event you're going to have, whether it's a show, a contest, uh, you're a lead singer in a band, whether you're doing musical theater, whatever. So go back and look at that, um, powertosing.com, take that power test. I see Sapphire. Is it possible for different people to bridge at different notes? Um, good question. Almost, well, the bridges are always the same place. But yes, some of us bridge in different places. As I mentioned before, because I've got so much bottom in my voice, and I'm essentially a basso cantata, which just means I'm a bass with some tenor notes. I tend to bridge, well, I bridge earlier. And that means my bridge is actually where the women's bridge is, an octave lower. So I'm at the A, B flat, B, and C at middle C. For most uh, many basses um, and uh, bare tones and tenors, their bridges are at the E, F, F sharp above middle C. Now for the women, um, most women are going to bridge at the A, B flat, B, and C above middle C. But there are some women singers who have low voices, and they're called um, a, um, well, they're a true alto, which 
Um, I just, it just, I just skipped my my mind. I said it a minute ago, and I can't remember. I'll think of it in a second. Anyway, um, they'll sink down to the, the low C, the C three, the a, a C below um, middle C, or D, or the B, or the even the A. And so they will bridge where the men, where the tenors and baritones bridge, the E F F sharp above uh, middle C. So that's contralto is the word. So yes, uh, we do. We can bridge in different places depending on our um, vocal classification, and um, but the bridges for all basso cantatas or basso profundos, for example, are always going to be at the A uh, below middle C, uh, the contraltos at the E above middle C, for the sopranos at the A above middle C, and so forth. How do I know which register I'm singing in? Okay, well, that's a good question. Down here, chest. Middle is your bridge area, which is where it wants to break, or uh, right now, if you're just starting out. Head voice. Can I change the point at which I bridge? No. That's, those are good questions. Well, uh, I am getting close to needing to end this. I want to make sure that we uh, take care of <clears throat> um, Ty Wilson asked, can we use head voice? I hope so. Patricia Patino. Hello, big hug. Thank you, Patricia. I'm teaching right now, and I'm sharing this live section with my students. She says, hi. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, so some of you I haven't had a chance to say hi to. Osminium Studios from Lith Lithuania. Awesome, hello. So nice to have you here. Alessio, oh, see, I think we did say hi. Um, oh, a I see, you're from Kenya, cool. Okay. So am I, uh, someone said the picture's late, so maybe my, sometimes the sound on these broadcasts gets a little disconnected for some reason. Uh, another question, what voice, opera, what voice do you classify as? I'm not sure what that means. Um, oh, opera, sorry. Oh, that's, uh, that's your, your name. What voice do you classify as? For me, I think I mentioned that my vocal, vocal classification is a uh, basso profunda, which, uh, sorry, uh, basso cantata, which is, means a bass uh, with some tenor notes. Vocal type, vocal type, sure. What voice type, sorry. My I, I tend to pull my chest. I, my tends, what I tend to do is pull chest high larynx, so I'm always having to work on that to make sure that I don't. And so that's what I tend to do. Um, exercise that uh, helps with snoring. I really don't have any recommendation on that. Um, because we're asleep, you know, and uh, everything relaxes, everything changes, everything you know, we'll collapse or close up, and I, I don't. Sorry. I, I don't think there's anything about, uh, I, I don't think you can, like, beef up or, or strengthen the soft palate. It's, it's soft tissue. Um, the cords, the vocal cords can definitely be strengthened and developed, but I, I'm just unaware of anything that's going to change the condition of the soft palate. Um, there's a, it is a question here from Osinia, Osman, Osman, Osman um, Studios. Why do you think in, vocal, in the vocal community there's a stigma to say that SLS singing is unhealthy because it weakens chest voice and is unhealthy? SLS guys say that belting is unhealthy. Well, that's an awesome question. Um, first of all, I think there's a kind of territorialism in maybe every field, you know, um, Different companies feel like they're the greatest thing in the world uh, and their competitors are all wrong. 
and in, probably in reality, there's much, um, much more in common than we all allow. And so we, we take offense or we kind of dig our heels in. I think that's, one, that's probably number one reason. Uh, number two is I think there are a lot of people who have studied SLS and SLS singers uh, who uh, have not worked hard enough on their middle and aren't, or haven't worked hard enough um, on their voices and stayed with it long enough to really have a strong voice. I mean, that's just part of it, too. Um, Seem to say that SLS singing is unhealthy because it weakens chest voice. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that one about a weak chest voice. I have heard it about. Uh, I think I've heard that you know people who sing speech level singing don't have a belt, don't have this you know, or a really strong, powerful head voice or something, and um, you know. I think it's probably whatever example you've chosen to listen to, I've heard some really tremendously powerful uh, mixers. Yeah, you, maybe you've heard of them, and one of them was like a guy named Michael Jackson. You ever heard of him? I don't know. Kind of a, yeah. Anyway, he was okay. Uh, and there's a lot of others that uh, have pretty well demonstrated that <laughs> they didn't have any trouble with uh, chest or head or anything else. If you've never heard Michael Jackson, uh, you, can re you can search on YouTube and find uh, Seth Riggs working with him in some vocal exercises. It's just on a, like a recording, a telephone recording. And uh, there's some places where he gets down low. I mean, I think Michael got down, if I remember right, Seth had him at one time down as low as that. But Michael could sing low. He had lots of choice. He had lots of chest voice. But, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to be facetious about this. There are criticisms about uh, speech level singing, which I don't think are accurate. And whether it's jealousy or whether they just have never heard anybody, uh, maybe they've never heard Michael Jackson or uh, uh, Bernadette Peters or uh, Barbara Streisand or, uh, you know, some of these other people that Te Seth Riggs taught. And uh, uh, there was another guy named uh, Josh Groban. Uh, who uh, Seth taught and introduced to David Foster. You know, um, my gosh, some of the greatest singers th th that we've had around. And I don't know all of the opera singers that Seth has produced, but he, he primarily taught opera when he first started. And uh, he had to go to pop and classic uh, 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 music theater because you can't make a living teaching opera. There weren't that many people wanting to have opera. So... Um, So that's, uh, here's the other reason. Speech level singing is, you develop your voice, and this is, a, this, is the, this is probably the answer that's going to be the most accurate of what I've said. Seth, Seth Riggs teaches that the voice is developed not by pushing it to its limits. It's developed over time by developing balance and coordination. And then the power comes. And I think that both uh, the students, many students, have just not wanted to pay the price of uh, waiting for, to find the balance to develop the strength and power in their voice. And as a result, they've quit or they've gone away and they, and they haven't developed the power that they could have or they don't have the patience. And so they just either continue to pull their chest voice or uh, whatever other bad habit or whatever they tend to do, whatever their tends to is, they give up um, because they're in a hurry. And so they go to other techniques that aren't worried about balance and not, they're not worried about coordinating and developing the vocal cords themselves. So they use the extrinsic muscles to uh, create a, a, a big sound. And they can definitely get a big sound. It may not be uh, a sound that they'll be able to use all of their life. It may not be able to be a sound that they use um, when they age. But um, that's the, you know, that's probably why. It's just that it, speech level singing, uh, we, we take the singer where they are and don't push them beyond where they should be. 
They've got to, they've got to come along themselves and we can challenge and we can uh, you know, give them exercises that are going to help them develop. But um, if, if they're here in the middle, that's where they are. If I say, can you crescendo? If that's all they've got, that's all they've got today. If they keep working on it, though, it's going to grow. It's not that SLS doesn't work. So it's, it's just that it, we um, allow the voice to develop and uh, the, the balance and the coordination to, de to develop rather than try to engage the extrinsic muscles to make it happen. And that's my opinion. That's, that's the way I, I think about it. So anyway, if you're still here, thanks for sticking around. Um, so great to see everybody. Hi, Jordan. Um, oh my gosh, I can't uh, pronounce. Uh, Ilaria, Ilaria Kirkasina from Italy. I'm so bad with being able to pronounce names, but thanks for joining me today, everybody. So great to see you. Andrea, hi, uh, Mr. Spartan. Uh, from Muchi, thank you. So um, until next time, please join me next week. I do these every week, and today we actually went 45 minutes. So there we go. I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live. You can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. I'll see you inside the next video, the next live video. Thanks. Bye-bye.